these programs how important it is to respect all these animals. Even if you don't like spiders, which I don't, you'll notice I didn't say I'd go over and squash it. No, I put it outside. Same thing with snakes. If I see a snake, I love snakes, so I don't have a problem with that. But um, I'll tell you the story behind this particular snake here. I don't like to take animals out of the wild. There are a couple of animals that we have today that we're taking out of the wild, and we'll explain why when we have them. But, um, but for the most part, uh, every animal out there has a job to do. Spiders eat bugs. Bugs can carry diseases. If we keep the bug population down, we keep diseases down. Lots of times, snakes are going to eat rodents. Rodents can eat, I mean, uh, snakes can eat rodents. So they're going to keep the rodent population down. That's going to keep uh, diseases down too. So every animal out there has a place in the ecosystem. And we should respect that and, and, uh, and leave them alone. It is a native species and it was taken out of the wild. And there is a good reason why. Whenever I catch an animal in the wild, let's say I wanted to use something for a program, and I catch an animal in the wild, I always put it right back where I found it. Why is that so important to put something back where you found it? Well, let's say you took an animal from Florida. We have some box turtles today. We're going to talk about those in a few minutes. But um, let's say we took a box turtle from Florida, brought it up here, our kids got sick of it. They said, we don't really want it anymore. And you said, well, I know there's eastern box turtles around. I'm going to let it go. And you let that turtle go. What happens? Well, that's a gene pool from a totally different area. That is a box turtle that doesn't hibernate, that's now going to introduce the, those genes to this population here. So we don't want to do that at all. And then there are times when you're introducing a species that doesn't even belong there. That's even worse. So anyway, I always like to put things right back where I found them. Well, the problem with this one was I found it in my basement. So I couldn't very well release it in my basement. My wife would kill me. She does not like snakes. So when I got this snake, I thought it was really cool. First of all, let's find out a little bit about snakes in general and this snake in particular. What kind of snake is this? Milk. It is a milk snake, indeed. It is a milk snake. And there are 23 different kinds of milk snakes. Different subspecies. This is one that's called an Eastern milk snake. I find them to be one of the most beautiful. They're gorgeous snakes. But when I found her, there was something very strange about her. She was huge. And I said, oh my goodness, this is a gravid milk snake. So I took her and I put her in a container. And two days later, she laid nine eggs. And I brought with me a couple of things to show you. One is, this is what the eggs look like. It was a mass of eggs. And we stayed together in a big mass. I left them that way, just the way they were laid. And I made sure that they stayed hydrated. I would spray the container um, occasionally just to make sure that they stayed nice and hydrated. And sure enough, they hatched. All nine of them hatched. And I brought baby with me today just to show you what they look like when they're young. This baby is about three weeks old. Now the problem I have is, what do I feed them? These guys are mice eaters. We'll have to give them pinkies. Pinkies are baby mice, and I don't know where I can find those uh, right now. I know you can buy them frozen, so I may try and do that. Um, but these guys have not eaten yet. But this is mom, and this is one of the babies here. So they're really kind of an interesting creature. All right, do snakes have bones? No. Yes, yes indeed they do. Okay, where are you going? And. They actually have more bones than we do. They've got a big, long backbone made up of all these little bones. And then they have a strange jaw, too. Because this is an animal that has to eat its food in one piece. Can't cut it up with a fork and knife. Can't chew it up. Doesn't have the right kind of teeth. So what it needs to do is open its mouth really wide. And what it has is a spare bone right here and here that allows it to open its mouth super wide this way. And also, if you were to feel your lower jaw, you'd notice it's one piece. There's a split right in the middle. So they can open their mouth super wide this way as well. Now that's really huge because it means that they can open their mouth to eat something the size of a mouse. Can you imagine that that head right there is going to be able to eat a mouse? But it can. It might take it a while, and so it's got a hole under its tongue that allows it to breathe while it is swallowing its food. So snakes are pretty fascinating. Even if you don't like them, they're really kind of neat to see.
Thank mm-hmm. you.